this week on the Media Boss Podcast. I was a young CEO. I, I felt like I was on top of the world, at least outwardly, it seemed like that, uh-huh. right? And uh-huh. uh, but as you mentioned, I was sick. I was so sick. And um, the doctors. Media Boss Podcast is brought to you by two of our new partners. One is Pantheon. I can't wait to tell you about them later. And brought to you by Convert and Flow. You're going to learn so much about them. But now it's time for the Media Boss Podcast. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Media Boss Podcast. I am Dr. Barrett Matthews, and you know, guys, you know what I'm going to say, right? You know I always bring to you a great show and an even greater guest, and I don't like to disappoint you guys, so I'm not going to do that today. Look, let me tell you something. This guest today, you're going to be wild. You may be in tears. You, you may be excited. You may have found something new about yourself. But let me tell you, he was a CEO. He was a CEO of a company and he got ill. He got majorly ill. And I'm going to let him tell most of the story, but I'm just going to let you know that doctors even gave up and he was able to heal himself. That's right. You heard me. Heal himself. He is also a, the host of a fantastic podcast called What Magnificence. And I think you guys need to go ahead and subscribe and listen to it like right now. Well, after you listen to this. So, <laughs> so. I want to bring to you guys right now, Mr. Chase Throdock. Chase, welcome to the Media Boss Podcast. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Man, I'm thrilled. I'm really excited to have you here because I, I, we met earlier and I was just like telling everybody about your story. <laughs> and like, I feel like I, I was there with you or something, man. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Because you tell it well. So I'm going to just shut up for a second and let you tell it. Well, thank you. I, I You set the bar very high. I set it, I, set I it high. You, well, it's your story. I, How did I say it? I hope maybe we'll get some tears. I don't know. Uh, so I was, yeah, I mean, I was a young CEO. I, I felt like I was on top of the world, at least outwardly, it seemed like that. Uh-huh, right. And, uh-huh. uh, but as you mentioned, I was sick. I was mm-hmm. so sick. And, um, the doctors, uh, they were wonderful and they, they tried every medication that was available mm-hmm. and none of them worked. Mm-hmm. And at first that was so discouraging to me. Right. And, uh, I, uh, what am I going to do here? And eventually got to the point where they said, we've got opioids and we've got steroids. That's mm. all we've got left for you. And bless your soul if you're dealing with that and you're on opioids, you're on steroids, because that's that's nasty stuff, it right? Is, it's it almost is. worse than a disease. Yeah. Um, and I was hospitalized for several months. My When my first, my first son was born, I had a line that went into my arm, mm. to my heart, and that's how I was being fed. I couldn't eat. I can't imagine. For months and months at a time. Uh, I was, that's the only nutrition I was able to get into my body. And I remember as I was eventually bedridden from this, I couldn't walk. I Mm -hmm. couldn't even, I I couldn't stand. I couldn't shower. I remember laying in the shower to try to clean myself because I couldn't even be on my feet and crawling to get there. Um, But I was preparing for the worst. I I, I was doing my will if I could and... I had uh, three young boys at that time and a wonderful wife, and I think my youngest was three months old. Mm. Um, and I, you know, I was in despair. I didn't know what to do. And there was a clear, <laughs> a clear answer that at first I thought was a thundercloud. I just thought it was the nail in the coffin, but uh-huh. it said, Chase, the doctors are not going to heal you. If you're going to mm. heal, you're going to heal yourself. Right. Mm. I was like, well, that's it. You know, God will speak to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but at first, I just felt dropped on my face. I just felt like I'm not a medical professional. Yeah. I have none of this background. How am I going to heal myself? Wow. But the truth is, is that he didn't tell me something that wasn't true from the beginning. Amen. That had always been true. It's true, right? Um, and thank goodness, uh, the people were put in my life who I needed to be able to start taking hold of my health, and I was able to heal my body. And now. Since that time, I, I, I mean, I have a choice, but it feels like I have no other choice but to share this message because wow. it's, I, I take no medications and I have no signs or symptoms of my disease. I, I tell you, the, the interviews that I love and hate the most are the ones that have so much that I don't even know which question to go to now <laughs> because there's so many. I mean, it's like, wow. Okay. First of all, I, 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 I love the fact that you're a spiritual man. Yeah. I love that because that carries a long carries people a long way and a lot of people they they make the oh it's the woo woo stuff but no man this is real yeah this is, this is real life this is truly life or death and i i i 
appreciate the fact that you acknowledge that and that that's that's a big thing but when so when it comes to the it's just the idea of say heal yourself yeah because we've we've been taught so many different things that like they're, they're not true yeah <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So how did how did it even come to the point where you said, okay, I can do this? Yeah. Well, I, I think it's interesting because I, so now I work with executives. I work mm -hmm. with entrepreneurs. I even work with health professionals, healthcare right, professionals right. who have hit the end of their rope or have patients that, you know, they, yeah. they, they've no longer been able to help. And the fascinating thing is that they will all agree. If you go to your doctor and you ask him, can you heal me? Mm -hmm. Right. Or you ask her, can you heal me? Um, they're a pretty terrible doctor if they say yes. Because exactly. the truth is, is yeah. that it's only your body that can yeah. heal itself. Yeah. yeah, It's just a question of what conditions are required mm -hmm. to be able mm -hmm. to do that. But the body wants to heal. Of course it wants to heal, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that's what kind of started this journey for me. He when, I, when I caught a hold of that, it became empowering to me because then I realized it's up to me. Yeah. It was never up to anybody else. And if I can do it, nobody can take this from me. This is amazing. Right? And and that's that's what I did. And, and, and it made me, you made me think of that, that quote, um, physician heal thyself. Yes. And that's the only way it can happen. Is right. Physician heals thyself. Right. <laughs> and to even talk more about that, you know, there was a time where Christ was amongst his people in mm -hmm. his community. And mm -hmm. he told them, I can't help you. Right? Mm. Because they weren't willing to help themselves. Yes. You yes. know, and I, I think that's kind of the message that I'm sharing with people is that mm. I went on this million mile journey, hoping to be delivered from something, yeah. hoping to be delivered from my illness. Mm -hmm. Right. And at the end of that path, what I found was a mirror, mm -hmm. right? Like my answer was in the mirror. Wow. It wasn't anywhere else. Wow. It was inside of me. Wow. And, and that, that in itself, what you just said there with this, it's so amazing because we are always looking for someone else to do things. And it's all, it's all within God, God put it all in us mm -hmm. and in nature, not the steroids <laughs> to, to, to help us to, to heal. And it's one of those things that it, make, it kind of makes me angry too, because we have been taught and conditioned so much in this medical prescription based world that we're in. And it's like, that's not going to, it's a placebo type of thing. And it's not going to heal us. The, I've I've seen the effects that the steroids that opioids can have on people, and it, it's not pretty pink. Well, what's really interesting is that the steroids that they were prescribing to mm -hmm. me actually mimic a chemical that my body already makes. Oh wow, right? cortisol. Uh -huh. It's your primary stress hormone. But when we synthesize the compound, mm -hmm. we can't do as good a job as your body. Yeah. That's why we end up with a bunch of side effects. Right. Because the cortisol we take as a pill, uh -huh. our body. It's not a perfect messenger, yeah. right? It's not a perfect fit with our yeah. receptors. And we end up, for me, with, with brittle bones and all this moon face stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, it was, it was terrible. You can go to my yeah. website and uh -huh. see pictures of, of what yeah. I looked like. Um, but your body makes this. It's inside of you, yeah, right? Yeah. And not only that, but it's a massively anti-inflammatory compound. So one of the things that I teach people to do is how to access that chemical in a healthy mm -hmm, way, mm -hmm. how to produce it and how to release it on command. Mm. So you can dose yourself with your own prednisone. Really? Right? Without all the nasty side effects. How did you learn to even do that? But that is, wow. Well, I, I, you're giving me a lot of credit, but my back was against the wall, right? Like I had, a lot the of people alternative back was against dead. the wall, but they don't even know how to do something Well, like I was that. fortunate, like I said, that people come into my life that help me understand and then I wanted to know, I dove into the science. Okay, right? okay. And essentially what I learned is that we have a resource allocation system. Mm. It's called your autonomic nervous system. I heard you mention that yeah. before, yeah. And it's a lot like a budget in a business, okay. right? Or gas in your car or whatever, right? Uh. But essentially it determines whether your resources are devoted to surviving now via fight or flight or surviving later via rest and digest. And in this world we live in, we're yeah. under constant stress, mm -hmm. but it's not like the stress we had hundreds of, of years ago, where if you had that stress, you were running from a tiger, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Or you were fighting something. Mm -hmm. And in those examples, if you were running or actually fighting for something, it always ended with the same thing, which was deep breathing. Yeah. Because you were exerting. Yeah. Now we're in our cars and traffic jams and mm -hmm. we're stressed out mm -hmm. of our minds mm -hmm. and we're shallow breathing the yeah. entire time. So our body just gets the message, I guess we're still in fight or flight, stay in fight or flight. Wow. And what that does is it robs your other body systems of functioning. Now wow. all your blood's in your arms and your legs, which is great if you're running away, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's not very good if you're trying to digest your meal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so you st those systems start to shut down. 
So my, my method is all about learning how to stretch and exercise that system mm -hmm. so you have more balance and control and then being able to access it when you need it. So once they got rid of all, well, once you rather got rid of all the signs of any illness in your body, is it something that you continue to utilize or is it something that now your body can go back to where it was before? That's a good question. And all fundamentally what changed for me was that my body didn't want to go back to what it was before. Okay. Because again, I thought I want, if I was delivered from my illness, that I would have wellness by default, mm -hmm. that I would be healthy yeah, by default, yeah, yeah. but that was false. Okay. Wellness is created. Ooh. Health is created. Ooh. Right. And from a business perspective, businesses are created. Yeah. Right. So anything that we make in this world that's worthwhile is something that we create. Mm -hmm. And once I understood that about my health, then it just became wide open to me, yeah. right? I could then have control over my health. And now here's the cool part. Uh -huh. Because I was tied into my body that before this was an adversary to me, mm -hmm. it was dragging me down and I felt horrible yeah. in it. Now it became a partner to me, mm -hmm. right? It became something that innately had everything that I needed to heal yeah. and it could tell me what to do. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. So I wasn't dependent on anybody else, but now it was inside of me. I knew what I needed to do to be healthy. Yeah. And then I wanted to support that. And, and it's funny as I'm listening to you, and it's sad that I have, I have a sickness of myself, but it has nothing to do with physical, is that I remember there was a TV show like this where this guy, he could, he could, with his mind, he could control things with his body. I can't remember what it was, but, but he, I remember that now. And it's like, I don't know why that came to me. This <laughs> but, but there was a TV show like this. And they still need to make a movie about you. But, uh, <laughs> but the thing is, that is it's amazing. So do you get pushback from people? You know, people have asked me that, right? Like, how do you resolve a concern when people aren't willing to do this? Mm -hmm. And the truth is, again, I can't heal them. Right. They can only heal themselves. So if, if they can't convince themselves, mm -hmm. I can't do it for them. Okay. I could never do it for them. Right. So when it comes to pushback, it's all about just asking yourself the question, what if, right? What if I could heal my body? Mm -hmm. What if this is innately in me? Mm -hmm. Right. What if mm -hmm. I could find a way to do this? Then once you're able to be curious that way, yeah. you're going to open up your power to be able to actually take control over your health. So it's safe to say that in order to do this, that someone has to really have a positive mindset about, about healing. At least an empowered one. Okay. Cause okay. you may be really sick like I was, yeah. right. But to have that idea that I was in charge of my health mm -hmm. was the empowering mm -hmm. component, right? So someone may be really ill, I like that word, but even better, open empowered. to the yeah. idea that I can do something about this, mm -hmm. right? That's what can lead to the change. And that's the only thing that ever could lead to the change, whether you are really sick or whether you are really healthy, whether you wanted to run a marathon or eat a salad, right? Yeah. Only in you can and, that motivation exist. And I love that you are working with like CEOs and executives because I, I know we were talking earlier, you said that a lot of them when they're dealing with illnesses, they can't just go telling people. Yeah. Well, they're in a tricky situation. They have employees. But if I go and tell my employees, they're going to wonder about the stability of the business and they mm -hmm. may quit. Mm -hmm. And then I've got even maybe some venture capital money or a board that right, I report right. to. If I tell them, then they're going to be making plans behind my back to replace me. Right. They will. So that's where I was. It's a really lonely position to be in. Mm -hmm. um, and so I always encourage somebody, whether it's with me or with somebody else, like find some help, find somebody that you can talk to about what you're going through. Is that something, is that the reason why you chose to work with CEOs because you were in that position yourself? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I understand exactly what they're going through, the mm -hmm. pressures that they're involved in. And I also think executives and entrepreneurs mm -hmm. have that component of determination. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I have control over mm -hmm. aspects, right? You wouldn't do that unless you felt empowered. If you yeah. felt like a victim, you're not going to be an entrepreneur or a CEO, right? So we can leverage into some of that uh -huh. and use that to help them on their health. Makes sense. Makes yeah. sense. So let's talk about what magnificence. Sure. So first of all, I love the title. Thank you. I love the title. Thank and you. That's, that's a great name for a podcast. And I, it, it, I don't even need to ask why you thought it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, my grandpa mm -hmm. lived a, a long life that was not easy. Mm -hmm. Very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. Even compared to my life, he, he was orphaned young. Like it was a really intense thing. And when I ask him now, how are you doing? He says in his gruff voice every time, he says, magnificent, right? That's how oh, he really? answers me. And it got planted in my brain. How can you say that and mean that 
with the life that you've been dealt, mm. right? And that was the what if that I had. That was my what if moment. What if I okay. could be like that regardless of what I experienced? What that and that was honestly the parameters that were required for my body to begin healing. But that's where the name comes from. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So your podcast has been going how long? How, I, it's not long. About a year. About a year? Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, so you've done a good number of episodes. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. So, and I remember we were talking because even those people who aren't CEOs, who aren't executives, can, can glean something from your podcast. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. If, if you've got the, the fight to survive what you're going through, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. do it. So, and I asked you this, we're not recording, but I want to, so is there any part of the, the body that you feel is more difficult for someone to heal in the body than any other? You know, I answered you earlier and I said, no, but I ha I've changed my okay. answer, right? Okay. Because the biggest boundary that I run into is the organ between your ears, mm. right? And not, not in the sense that you actually have physical brain damage. Yeah, yeah. But when we become conditioned to act, auto to act automatically in a situation, right? where my grandpa had made a choice mm -hmm. to see his world differently, mm -hmm. right? So many of us are trapped in this situation where we see us as victims of our circumstances, yeah. right? Yeah. That life just happens to us. Yeah. And that is wired into our brains yeah. and it leads to a constant state of fight or flight, constant yeah. oh, state yeah, of survival, that's true. right? That's true. And so part of the work that we do together is rewiring that brain. Mm -hmm. changing its cognition so mm -hmm. that there's actual choice and decisions that are being made. So when it comes to the hardest part of the body to heal, yeah, it's what happens between your ears. It's, it, yeah. It, it, yeah. It, now, when you say to heal, so you're, you're not talking about like, say, um, dementia or something. You're saying it's just uh, the choices that we're making. No, I, I mean that your, your mind and your body are intricately connected, uh -huh. right? And that those maladaptive wiring pathways mm -hmm. that I had developed mm -hmm. that kept my body in fight or flight were contributing to my disease. Okay. Okay. And that I needed to change those pathways. Right. If that's I what wanted I mean. to You're, change a, the way my of, body right. is responding. That's what I meant. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And so is it, is it mental? Is it physical? And I always say, listen, like if you remove the head from the body, does other, either one of them work? Yeah. No. Like we've done ourselves a disservice by separating it. Yeah. It's all intricately connected. Uh -huh. But one thing is true. The body knows how to heal itself and it can heal itself regardless of the ailment. That's it true. can heal itself. That is true. That is true. I, I mean, this is the, amazing to me. I, I can imagine your phone read off the hook. You know, I, I <laughs> have the privilege of working with people all around the world and I'm inspired every day by the choices that they make because only they can do it. And, and I'm sure that they're, they, I can, I mean, I'm just not, I don't know if anyone's crying right now listening, but I'm sure that the people that you have helped I, I just just put tears running down because the know to know that they have that within them and to know that you don't have to depend on medical science to do it for you i I just think it's an it's an amazing thing and i just I'm encouraging everybody to listen to the podcast it, you, like I said if you're not a CEO if you're not an executive the man's here to he's doing a podcast to help you I've tried to make all the information as widely available as possible that, through the podcast that's that's a wonderful thing I mean yeah I mean because basically you can't work with everybody one on one anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everybody does ill. I mean, God, even Christ couldn't. So I mean, that's the, that's the thing. You can't work with everybody one on one. So you have to do what you can. And the media is. I, I tell you, I'll, I'll tell you this every time. The media is one way to get your message out there. You can help people help the masses without you having to be in those places. And this is exactly what what Chase is doing. And I'm just I'm just happy to have. Him. So Chase, before we let you go, is there anything that you want to share with the audience of how they can support you and anything that you're doing? Oh, wow. Well, thank you for asking. I, I think I feel most supported and most inspired when people are willing to take a step towards mm. the investing in their health in any way that they can. And if it makes sense, go to whatmagnificence.com, put in your email address and get the mini course. You're going to get an oh, wow. email every day for three days. Mm -hmm. that's going to give you a video to get this information in your body because you can have it here, but it doesn't matter. If you get it inside of you, it's going to make the difference. And then if it works, Sign up for the course, sign up for coaching, like invest in your health in the mm -hmm. way that you would invest in a business because you can't do any of this stuff. You can't do without your health. You need right. your health. Right. So take that first step. Wow. That would help me. And, and before I let you go, <laughs> I want to shout out to your family because I know that was trying for them when you were dealing with that. And I want to just say, hey, uh, kudos to you guys. Yeah. 
for staying in there with him and supporting yeah. him because that means a lot too, just having it that does. support. So good, good job there. Chase, thank you so much for being a guest here on the Media Boss Podcast. Everybody, we'll be back with more of the Media Boss Podcast. Hey, everybody. The Media Boss Podcast has been brought to you by our partners, Pantheon and Convert and Flow. Make sure you get with us so you can find out more about how you can help your business run smoothly with Pantheon and Convert and Flow. <laughs>